Philistines unto Gera. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, She is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife, and how saidst thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lien with thy wife, and thou shouldst have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that toucheth this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great, and went forward, and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks, and possession of herds, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them, and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names, after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, the water is ours, and he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence, and digged another well, and for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he builded an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants digged a well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou wilt do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink. And they rose up betimes in the morning, and swear one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace.
And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was forty years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Bashemeth, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's remain standing as we give our tithes and offering unto the Lord. We always say, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Whatever you've brought to the Lord, please raise them.
battle shall be gone and the victory be won. Conflict past, conflict past. In a happy home above, we'll receive a crown of gold at the last, at the last. Home will march to victory.
five Bible church choir ministrations from nations across the world. How to pray? Jesus heard and answered, took my sins away. Give me peace and pardon. Wrote my name above. Glory, Glory hallelujah, hallelujah for His wondrous love. I believe the Bible. I believe. Oh, it is Just gifts of Jesus to the one who sees, tells of keeping power, next the blessing flood, glory, hallelujah for his precious Lord. I believe the Bible, I believe. Oh, it is
If we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we need to trust him day by day. Following his leading, obeying his bidding. If we say we love him, then his word we must obey. a smile. Christ brought redemption. Christ brought total transformation, total renovation, and total regeneration, redemption to turn us away from all our sins. And now we need to have that persuasion through that gospel of Christ. Acts Chapter 19, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and he spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. Do you notice that? Paul the apostle went into the synagogue and you speak boldly. If you are sure of what you are saying, you will speak boldly. If you are saying that this is the only answer, and this is the only solution, and you want to convince the people you are speaking to, you will speak boldly. If you have experienced it yourself, if the gospel of Christ has made a definite, indelible impact in your life. And you know for a certainty that when people come to Christ, there will be a total transformation by the power of that gospel. You will speak boldly. If you love the person you are talking to, you don't fear him, 
but you love him and you know that what you have is his only remedy for sin. What you have is his only possibility of getting out of darkness and coming into the light. You will speak boldly and you speak boldly by the space of three months in the same place, knocking, knocking, knocking in at the same issue. And they were told, disputing, debating, and persuading them of the thing concerning the kingdom of God. Persuading, that's the word. If you're going to persuade people, you need to know where you're going, why you're speaking, what you are telling them, what you are telling them. And you don't want to just preach, just to preach. You want to persuade. You want to convince. You want to get them from where they are to where they ought to be. Acts chapter 28, reading from verse 23. It tells us, it says, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. He expounded and testified as he showed them in the Bible, in the word of God, in the Old Testament, they claimed to believe. He expounded and then he testified. He said, me too. That power of the gospel had effect on me. That power of the gospel turned my life. And look at the next word there. Persuading them. That's the word. That's the word. As we preach, we have to persuade the people, convince the people, convict the people, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. You need to, you know, say, if you are not convinced in 30 minutes, good luck. I don't have any time again. If you are not convinced in one hour, good luck to you. Then you can go and then you can perish. He was persuading them, persuading them, persuading them from morning till evening. This gospel will reach everyone in our world in Jesus' name. Please rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, thank you for your revelation and thank you for what you have done through the gospel in my own life and what you will do with the gospel in our ministries together. Consecrate yourself to the Lord and let him use you today, use you, this generation, to take the gospel to everyone. Let's open our mouths and take this charge to God in prayer. Paul the Apostle persuaded them. Pray for God to give us the grace to go closer to them so we can bring them to Christ. He spake boldly unto them for the space of three months human hearts generally are opposed to the gospel of Christ and we need to persuade. We don't need to hit and run. Convince them. Persuade them. Press it upon their hearts. If you are sure about the reality of heaven and hell, you will speak boldly without any mincing word. If you have experienced personal transformation, that your experience will make you not to keep quiet. You will speak, and you will not speak with doubt in your heart, because you know where sinners are going. You know the eternal end of the wicked, and you cannot pass them by without sharing the gospel with them. And you don't take no for an answer. 
If they refuse, you pray for them again. Go back to them. But if you have lost your experience of love for evangelism, it's likely you have also lost your initial experience of transformation. Examine your life and pray it back again. If you are timid without backbone in declaring the gospel, then check up whether you are still keeping your experience or you have lost it. You don't fear those that you are preaching to, but you love them because that is the only remedy for their freedom from eternal damnation. Paul went into the synagogue to preach to the Jews Remember, he had come out of Judaism, but he still loved them. He was no more in their denomination, so to say, but he still entered into them to influence them, to win them to Christ. This is what we are doing through the global crusades of our Father and the Lord. Draw them closer. Affect them positively. Win them without compromising with them. Drop every holier-than-thou attitude. Remember that Paul did not believe in the Sabbath again, but still went to preach to them on the Sabbath day because he saw a congregation without hope. He saw a congregation without eternity in view, eternity in heaven. He knew the value of their souls. The love for Christ must constrain us today to do the same thing. Reach out to the perishing religious multitudes around us. Get them from where they are and take them to where they ought to be. Open their eyes that religion will not save them. Do it with passion. Do it with persuasion. Do it with conviction. Paul was concentrating until he warned them. He was persuading them, convincing them, convicting them, compelling them, and even leading them to salvation experience by spending months and sometimes years with them. When last did you preach to a soul? Another opportunity of Global Crusade is coming again. Undo Global Crusade is next week, Thursday. Use that as opportunity again to bring souls to the Lord. Pray that God will give you the courage, the passion, the compassion, the vision, the zeal, and the fire to win souls again as you were doing in the early days. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for ministering to us again, for speaking to us, for touching us, for visiting us through this short exhortation. I pray that you will bring back the fire, bring back the power, bring back the unction, bring back the zeal, bring back the commitment, bring back the compassion, and bring back the grace that we had in those days so we can give ourselves completely, totally, wholly to bringing souls to your kingdom. Help us to run with our Father in the Lord in the vision for global crusade so we can reach out to multitudes outside our own denomination. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' And every who have been sorrowful, if anybody ought to have been sad, if anybody ought to have come to the public dejected and not having confidence, 
It should have been Joseph because of everything he had gone through. But he knew he was a child of prophecy. And he was a candidate to fulfill the prophecy of the Lord. And he knew that the Lord was with him all the time. And because the Lord was with him, and he was to do what the Lord had ordained for him to do, he came out confident, calm, without thinking of what had happened in the past, and he was joyful in service. It's an experience and it's an example for every one of us whatever it may, may be happening and whatever might have happened when you come to the congregation the people of god and you come to minister to them you don't uh, show anything like you know i'm the joseph of this generation and i'm going through a lot i'm depressed i'm oppressed no you come to the congregation with the joy and gratitude that God has chosen you to serve him and there is nothing around you, nothing before you, nothing to the people you are selling the truth and giving the truth and promoting the truth before them. There should be nothing that will make you shake or tremble or be unhappy or not have confidence, not have backbone. When you go to declare the word of the Lord to the people, you come and all your heart, everything the Lord has given to provide, you provide for the people. May the Lord give you the grace in Jesus' name. So we are not bent down, bowed down, and then well, I'm having depression, I'm having stress, I'm having this. And even as you are talking to the people, ministering to the people, the people will know that you are under some oppression. And, uh, you know, if our teachers in schools, if they come before our children who are, who are sent to school, and if they come, there's no confidence, they may have the subject matter in their head. But they do not have the confidence and the courage to minister to those uh, children. Our children will not make it. The same thing, if the people were ministering to, if they see that we're fearful, we're timid, we're afraid, we're oppressed, we're depressed, and we're ministering to them, many of them will not even think of their salvation. They will not think of the truth we're giving to them. They'll be thinking of the way we look and the way we stand and the way we talk and all of that. May the courage from heaven and the confidence in Christ come to every one of us in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. We're looking at the message today, fulfilling God's will during a prevailing worldwide famine. Fulfilling God's will during a prevailing worldwide famine. As we look at the story, we're going back to Genesis now chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 15, it says, And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. They will go into a strange land, the descendants of Abraham. And that strange land is Egypt. And the Lord worked everything out now that the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, they are going into Egypt to fulfill the prophecy that had been given since the time of Abraham. And now we come to chapter 46, reading from verse 1. In chapter 46, verse 1, And Israel, that's Jacob, their father, took his journey, weighed with all that he had, and came to Beersheba, and offered sacrifices unto the God 
of his father Isaac. In verse 2, it says, And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here am I. Verse 3, And, and he said, I am God, the God of thy father, fear not to go down into Egypt, because this was to be the fulfillment of prophecy for the nation of Israel. They will become a nation when they get there. It says, for I will make thee of thee a great nation. They were few in number at this time. But in line with what God had told Abraham, they will become a great nation there in Egypt. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes obviously joseph was still alive and if jacob had been doubting all the pranks and all the things that the his sons had been telling him god now affirmed that joseph is alive and joseph will put his hand upon his eyes when he jacob will come to die a dead man cannot do that so joseph must be alive here we see the process of fulfilling god's will during a prevailing worldwide famine we're dividing the message to three parts number one Jacob's sacrifice and submission to God's will. Number two, Joseph's sanctification and servanthood in a godly way. Now, servanthood is not, you know, like in a servile manner. A person that's you know, afraid and therefore is uh, taking a slavish attitude. No, not that. A Christian is not a slave, a slave of men, a slave of society, a slave of sinners. No, he is a servant in a godly way like Jesus Christ came to serve and he was a servant in the same way we practice servanthood, not a servile, dejected, fearful, timid, frightened attitude. No, sanctification and servanthood in a godly way. Number three, justified separation of saints from the godless world. We're coming to number one. Number one talks about Joseph, about Jacob. Jacob's sacrifice and submission to God's will. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, his sacrifice in gratitude to God. He's going on a journey and he's so grateful to God. I will see my beloved son again. I will see Joseph again. I'm grateful to God and the way he expressed his gratitude is that he made sacrifice unto the Lord. Number two, his submission to the guidance of God. Not just that he sacrificed and then he left, the Lord showed his will. God showed his will and he had submission to the guidance of God. Number three, his security under the governance of God. Let's look at number one there. Number one there is the sacrifice in gratitude to God. We're told in Genesis chapter 46 verse 1, and Israel took his journey with all that he had, with all that he had, he actually took everything. He was not going to go there and come back again. Je Joseph is alive and he has got the information. Actually, he believed eventually when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent and even what Pharaoh had said. So he went with all that he had and he came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. Hold on. Sacrifices. What did he use to make those sacrifices? 
part of the cattle he had, part of the herds he had, there was farming. And because of the farming, there was scarcity. And people did not have enough. And yet, even though there was famine, he still took part of what he had and he sacrificed unto the Lord. And we should be grateful to God. He's given us a life to live and we're still breathing and he's kept us alive. He's watching over us in the day and in the night. And he's the one that is comforting us and his sons are gone to Egypt and they have come back to a good news there is something always to be grateful for and we should be grateful every time as we think about all that God has done for us and all that God is still doing Romans chapter 12 reading from verse 1 in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that he present your bodies a living sacrifice your body your skill your talent your ability everything you have that your body can do that you present that first unto god your body is unto god a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service look at verse 2 and it says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's come to number two here. Number two here is the submission to the guidance of God. Submission to the guidance of God. We need to emphasize this in our means as leaders. We need to emphasize this to our members in our local churches. Many of our people and even many of us here might think knowing the will of God is only at the time of marriage. And we'll pray and we'll seek the face of the Lord and we have uh, some items in our mind, a person I will marry that will help me and keep me in the ministry. It should be this and this and that. Or if it's, uh, you know, the sister, the person I will marry that will make me remain in the Lord, fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Oh Lord, show me we do well at that time. But you know, as we're getting older, we see that the will of God is not limited to just that time when you are getting married and you had never married before. Some of us were married before and then our first wife, spouse, went home to glory. And now if we have forgotten how to pray, how to seek the will of God, will just now be what do I do? How do I fill up the vacancy that the you know first wife at left? We must still know how to do the will of God, how to pray for the will of God. Not only really that, you're moving from one town to the other. You're moving from one business to the other. You're traveling overseas or you are doing anything, making a change, a change in your life, a change in your employment, a change in your profession, a change in your career, a change in any way, we should still be able to go back to God and have the guardians of God, that it will guide us, it will lead us. The decisions we take from day to day, you want to have somebody in your house so that that person, maybe you want to help people, maybe you just uh, want uh, to fill up a particular, that room is vacant and nobody's staying there. I want somebody there, find out the will of God. We want to have a help meet, a help image at home that will help help us you know the wife is feeling you know the duties of the housewife they're expanding and my husband will need to have somebody that will help me in the house pray and know the will of God and when you are taking in somebody it's not just like I ask uh, questions for five minutes uh, where do you come from what language do you speak how old are you uh, what's your educational level are you saved yes I'm saved 
sanctify yes they are sanctified holy ghost baptized yes they are baptized all that is not enough pray and know the will of god and we submit to the will of god as he guides us genesis chapter 46 i'm reading from verse 2 and god spake unto israel in the visions of the night and said jacob jacob and he said here am i verse 3 in verse 3 and he said i am god the god of thy father fear not to go down into egypt when last did you hear the voice of god what you are doing now where you are now the fellowship and the relationships you are having were so and so, such and such. When did you hear the voice of God? And the place you are going, I want to go there, I want to go and visit that and visit that. Did you hear the voice of God? This person will be my friend. It will be my, you know, we'll rub minds together. We'll be sharing ideas together. He'll be a bosom friend. She'll be a bosom friend. When did you hear the word of God? I'm going to sell off this, this house, and I'm going to buy another house in that other place. When did you hear the voice of God? God said unto him, he called him, and he said, here am I. And then we're told in verse 3, he said, in verse 3, and he said, I am God. The God of thy father, fear not to go down into Egypt, for I, I, I will make of thee a great nation. Things will be better when I lead you. And I lead you to the place where I'm going now. Things will be better than it had ever been. Because there, I will make of you a great nation. Look at me here. Sometimes we we'll take a step. We we'll take a decision. And then the decision we we'll take, look at this. The person you brought into your life now is worse than the other one that left. Look at this. The place you are living now, you thought there was trouble, discomfort in the other place you are living. The decision you are taking, you are in this new place now. Why did I leave that old place? Why did I give that up? Because the condition, this one is terrible. This one is worse. Now, that's the reason why we need to ask God, I'm taking this step. Are you going to bear with me? Is this your way? I'm planting this. I'm planning this. Is this your will? If it is the will of God, the future will be better than the past. He said, there I will make of thee a great nation. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, I will go down with thee into Egypt. And I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. In verse 5, verse 5 says, And Jacob rose up from Beersheba. And the sons of Israel carried Jacob, their father. Now, you know, sometimes the people who want to carry us from here to there, they're too much in a hurry, and they're putting pressure on us. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. They don't allow us to have the might of Christ, the will of God. They say, what are you doing? You're wasting time. Hurry up. You need to go from here now to there. Those who are to carry us, those who are to help us, and they are to aid us to move from here to there, let them be patient. Let's hear the voice of God. Let the Lord speak to us so that it's not just people, it's not problem, it's not the peculiarities of the day hurrying us up. And then we're just going from place to place. We don't know why we're moving. There's too much of a hurry by the people who are trying to help us to move from one place to the other. All those sons of Jacob, they were patient. Daddy is praying. Daddy wants to know. 
how to move and he wants to know from God directly. We've told him, we've shown him the chariots, we've shown him and told him what Joseph said, we've told him what Pharaoh said, what's he waiting for again? He must hear from God. The same thing with you, that you own your decision. And you know the direction you own, the direction you are going. It is not because of the pressure from all around. And it says, and Jacob rose from Bathsheba, and the sons of Israel, Jacob, their father, and, the, 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 and their little sons, and their wives, and the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they were told in verse 6, in verse 6 it says, and they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, and Jacob and all his seed with him. Jacob, the man, his old, but yet he knew that not one hoof are we going to leave behind and he carried everyone and came to the place the Lord has assured him I will be with you. Psalm 119 we're looking at verse 32 in Psalm 119 reading from verse 32 I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. In verse 33 it says teach me O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. You might grow to become one thirty years of age, and I will keep it unto the end. You might grow to become like Jacob, uh, one forty-seven years of age, and yet you make your decision and consecration that no matter. How old I become, this God who had been guiding me will continue to guide me. He'll continue to guide you in Jesus' name. I said he'll continue to guide you in Jesus' name. And we're looking at number three now. Number three, his security under the governance of God. His security under the governance of God. We have read already chapter 46, verses 2 to 4 of Genesis. And the Lord said, I'll be with you. I'll go with you. And I will lead you to that exact spot. You will see Joseph again. We need to understand that while when the way in the path where God that God has made for us our lives are secured your life is secured your family is secured look at what the Lord had said the Lord that told us in uh, Psalm 91 reading from verse 1 Psalm 91 verse 1 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty under the governors of the almighty under the security of the almighty under the cover of the almighty look at verse Verse 9, in verse 9, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Look at verse 10.